Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss the demonstration of reflex activity by Professor Sabashik. So first we'll see reflex activity. What do you mean by reflex activity? So a reflex activity is a spontaneous response to a particular stimuli. The reflex action is mediated by the reflex arc and it is mainly designed to generate a quick response and save the body from variety of damages. For example, when the hand touches the hot object unknowingly, it is withdrawn immediately. Now, a simple reflex arc include five component. The first one is the receptor which receives the stimulus and when the receptor is stimulated impulses are generated in afferent nerves. The second one is the afferent nerve. Afferent nerve or sensory nerve conduct a sensory impulses from the receptor to the integrating center. Now the third one is the integrating center. It is located in the brain or spinal cord and generate a appropriate motor impulses in response to the sensory impulses. Then the fourth one is the efferent nerve. Efferent nerve or a motor nerve conduct the motor impulse from the center to the effector organ. And the last one is the effector organ. Effector organ is the muscle or the gland that respond to the motor stimulus. Now, what is the significance of this reflex activity? So, in normal healthy person, reflexes should be present and equal on both the sides of the body. Abnormal or lack of reflexes indicate lesion or damage to the respective afferent or efferent neuron. They can be used as a diagnostic tool for some of the pathological conditions. Let's see the classification of reflexes. So reflexes are broadly classified into three different categories. The first one is the superficial reflexes, then second one is the deep reflexes and the third one is the visceral reflexes. Now let's see the procedure for various type of reflexes and then responses to be observed. So first we'll see the superficial mucous membrane reflexes. In this, the first one is the corneal reflex. So what we'll do, we'll touch a side of the cornea of an individual with a fine cotton swab stick while the individual looking at a far wall. So the response of this reflex is that the patient or the individual blinking blinks the eye and the afferent and efferent nerve involved here is the fifth and seventh and the integrating center involved here is the pons. Now the second, the second reflex is the conjunctival reflex. So here what we'll do, we'll touch, we'll touch the conjunctiva with a, with, with a cotton while the individual looking at far wall. So again the response is the blinking of the eye and the uh, afferent and efferent nerve involved here is the fifth and seventh and the integrating center involved here is the pons. Now the third one is the nasal reflex. So in this what we'll do, we'll touch the nasal mucosa of an individual by inserting a cotton thread inside the nostril. So the response of this reflex is the sneezing and the afferent and the efferent nerve involved here is the fifth, tenth and upper cervical nerves and the integrating center involved here is the pons. Now the next one is the pharyngeal reflexes. In pharyngeal reflexes what we'll do, we'll touch each side of the pharynx lightly with a wooden spatula. And the response of this is that the individual opens the mouth more widely. And the afferent and efferent nerve involved here is the 9th and 10th. And the integrating center involved here is the medulla. Now the next one is the vulvular reflex. So in this particular reflex what we'll do, we'll push down, which will push downward posterior part of tongue with a tongue depressor in a wide 
open mouth by saying ah in this particular thing what we'll do we'll insert a spatula into the mouth of the individual okay and the response is that the individual raising the vulvula and the the afferent and efferent nerve involved here is the 9th and 10th and the integrating center involved here is the medulla now let's see the superficial cutaneous reflexes so in superficial cutaneous reflexes the first one is the scapular reflexes so in scapular reflexes what we'll do with the help of a blunt tool we'll scratch the uh, will scratch the skin of the individual okay so we'll scratch at the inter scapular space so the response of this particular reflex is the contraction of scapular muscle and drawing in of scapula then the next one is the upper and lower abdominal reflexes so again in this type of reflexes what we'll do with the help of a key or a blunt point sub uh, blunt point object what we'll do for in case of the upper abdominal reflex we'll do we'll scratch here okay we'll scratch near the uh, below the costal margin okay and in case of the lower abdominal reflexes what we'll do with the help of that pointoid uh, pointed uh, object what we'll do we'll scratch here okay and we'll see the response to so the response is the brick a brick contraction of abdominal muscle now the third one is the plantar reflex so in plantar reflex what we'll do you can see here in the diagram with the help of hammer what we'll do we'll put uh, we'll uh, will uh, will stroke the foot of the individual okay and the response of this is the uh, adduction of toe so adduction of toe is nothing but moving the toe uh, uh, toward the midline of the body so this is about the sub, uh, superficial cutaneous reflexes now let's see the deep reflexes so in this the first one is the jaw jerk reflex so what we'll do we'll place the finger on the chin okay we'll place the finger on the chin with the mouth open and strike the middle of the chin with a uh, with a reflex hammer then what we'll do as we uh, put a strike here with the help of hammer the as the earlier the mouth is open so due to the uh, this uh, 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 jaw jerk reflex the closure of the mouth occur now the next one is the bicep jerk reflex so in this what we'll do we'll strike the bicep tendon you can see here in the diagram the on this particular point with the help of hammer we'll do the strike okay when we strike here with the help of hammer what happened the response occur is the flexion of the forearm flexion of forearm or in a simple term we can say the bending of the forearm occur now the next one is the tricep jerk reflex so in tricep jerk reflex what happens with the help of again uh, with with the help of again reflex hammer will put a strike here you can see here in this particular part will put a strike here and due to this strike what happens the extension of the forearm at the elbow occur okay now the third one uh, now the next one is the supinator jerk reflex in supinator jerk reflex what we'll do again with the help of uh, reflex hammer will put a strike here okay on this particular position so when we strike here the uh, reflex uh, action which occur here or the response occur here is the supination and the flexion of forearm flexion of forearm in a simple term again uh, it is called as the uh, bending of the forearm now the last one is the jerk uh, key, uh, knee jerk so in knee jerk again with the help of hammer uh, what we'll do we'll put a strike here okay and when we strike here then what happen the response occur is the extension of the legs so now let's see the last part of reflexes that is the visceral reflexes so here the example is the 
so here this is the example so what we'll do we'll focus a bright light of a torch to the uh, one one of the one side of the eye of the individual so when we focus a bright light to the individual eyes the response is the constriction of pupil and the integrating center involved here is the midbrain so now let's see the observation so during the lab uh, so in the lab we have performed three different reflexes nasal reflexes nasal reflex corneal reflex and knee jerk reflex and we found that all three reflexes are present so here is the reference thank you